One of the main areas that we deal with at Christian Healing Ministries is sexual brokenness, uh, gender identity, um, roots of sexual abuse, uh, s pornography. Uh, since I started my practice in the early 70s, the addiction to pornography is increased like, you know, a million <laughs> percent. It is so huge among pastors, among leaders. Uh, sexual addiction is now crossing into women. Uh, that's a, a real problem that we didn't have even 10 years ago. So the whole issue of sexual brokenness is one that I believe can only be dealt with through the power of the Holy Spirit because it is their, it, it's their body, it's their nature. It's a built-in beautiful gift from God that includes desire and passion and intimacy and oneness when we're in a marriage that, as God sees us. You know, so it's a, it breeds in, uh, I believe this is kind of in self-hatred, uh, loneliness, uh, deep abandonment, roots of abandonment in the childhood. Sexual identity issues come out of that. Uh, I worked for years in private practice and every homosexual or lesbian that I prayed with, God healed them and restored them through inner healing from their childhood. So we see tremendous healing in this area. And I believe the Holy Spirit is the only one that can really deal once the images and once the traumas in our brain, because our brain tends to repeat itself. You know, it's, it's a creature of habit our brain is. You know, I've been studying the brain more in the past few years. And it's almost like we have these pathways of addiction or, or something out of God's plan that get planted in the brain. And I believe that the Holy Spirit, I've seen this happen, actually heals the brain itself and begins to, to change the actual makeup of the brain that has been distorted in some way through the addictions or, or behavior, the sexual behavior. But it's a deep loneliness in our culture. It's just bred out of this deep loneliness. And if we start out in life not knowing we're loved, cared for, uh, touched in healthy ways, taught to love and appreciate our body, uh, then it's, it's a natural course for the enemy to kind of move us into these areas that are so dangerous now because of all the diseases associated with it. My husband actually wrote a wonderful little book on uh, healing of homosexuality. We've had some fabulous testimonies coming out of that book. And the ones that have been healed, it's strictly been inner healing. It's just so exciting for us. The church on the issue of homosexuality, if you just isolate it to that for a moment, you know, they're either, you know, preaching against it and saying it's a sin, but they don't give the people suffering from homosexuality any outlet for healing. And uh, God is a God of love and mercy. He has absolutely no problem loving anyone in any situation. And it's that love that heals them, that draws them back from a place of being isolated and separated. So we, we teach it in our schools too. I love it when parents teach their children at a very early age uh, who God is, that they spend more time loving their children instead of correcting them. Uh, it's the whole critical spirit that enters in trying to form. I think, you know, all of us had our children at earlier ages. And we tend to parent in the way that our parents parented us. And it's usually wrong. It's usually, you know, we worry more about behavior uh, instead of just loving and guiding them into the deeper truths of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, love, I love it when children are baptized in the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit from early on. And then they grow. They don't have all the needs for healing that we have. Uh, in our image of God, they don't have an issue. Like children now that are pray, they pray for healing for other people. I love to get prayed for by children. They're so anointed. And they're just such pure vessels if they've been told early on. So I, I would like to encourage parents to teach their children about a God of love and a God of mercy and a God of power and about the Holy Spirit 
and not be as concerned about the behavior. We focus so much on punishment instead of really, you know, I learned that the word discipline means to teach. In other words, a very wise woman told me that when my children were small. Don't focus so much on punishing them, teach them. You know, so, and then we all grow up in this punitive society that we think if someone does something wrong, we have to punish them. And uh, I'd love to see all that turned around. There's so many people like Father Richard Rohr and others that are doing this so effectively. I love to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's probably next to healing the subject I get most excited about. Um, all four Gospels, John the Baptist said, there is one coming that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. He said, I baptize you with water. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting as we, as we talk about this, of course, the Azusa Street was one of the great, great moments in history. You know, there's so many where the Holy Spirit was poured out. I had an experience in Jerusalem I'll share. I don't know if it's something you want to keep, but when I uh, moved to Israel, I started hearing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I thought, what's that? You know, grown up in the church, there every time the doors open, went to everything, volunteered, served, everything, never heard of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I started running into all these people that had been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they were radiant, and they were happy, and they were loving. They prayed, and things happened. And so finally, we decided we were going to go for it. We were just going to do it. My friend Lynn that read this house of prayer with me, we were just going to go for it. So we started on our journey. Then this pastor next door, this is right up from the Garden Tomb on Nablus Road, he had a little church. His name was Pastor Carmoot. And he heard about the Holy Spirit, and he decided to have all the church members come. And, you know, it was maybe 50 people. It was a small church. And he said, we're going to pray until we're all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they took all the children and put the children in the next room with two or three teenagers. They prayed, they fasted, they cried out to God. They were there like half a day. We could hear them from next door. <laughs> they were so eager, you know, and praying. And, and then all of a sudden, nothing was happening much for them. They heard this noise coming from the next room where the children were. And the Holy Spirit had gone to the children. And the children were walking around, had their arms lifted to the Lord. They were praying for each other. They were, they were filled with joy and love. And so the, the elders or the, the adults got down on their knees and had the children pray for them. And they received the Holy Spirit. So this was kind of in the early days in Jerusalem, our whole community there, Little Narcius Baptist Church under Dr. Robert Lindsay. We started moving in just the baptism of the Holy Spirit, operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which healing is one of them, listed in Corinthians. So to me, it's absolutely essential. It's not optional. And it's been optional. And fortunately, that's changing. It's starting to come back into the church now. How does one receive the Holy Spirit? I do believe that it's the Holy Spirit that leads us into a desire to know God. You know, the Holy Spirit does work in all of us before we're ever aware of it. But then the Holy Spirit, after we accept Jesus, however we want to talk about that, some people are baptized as infants or confirmation, some are born again later, however that happens in your life, there needs to come, and this is in the early church, this is in the book of Acts, there needs to come a separate experience where the Holy Spirit is asked to come and indwell and fill and transform and use us for the ministry of the kingdom. So I believe it's a separate experience. I think we receive the Holy Spirit, certainly, you know, when we receive Jesus, because it's the Spirit of Jesus. But then there's this fullness that comes. It's a fullness in our lives. And usually when that happens, it happens with a lot of... Uh, sense of God in your life. Like when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the garden tomb in Jerusalem, I suddenly had this sense that someone was with me. I'd been a Christian since I was eight, and I'm now like in my 20s. And I had this sense 
that somebody was there. And I've had that ever since. You know, it's like this wonderful presence. And then, of course, all the wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit that are mentioned in Corinthians, which is not a complete list. I, don't, I think there's a lot more gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can't limit him to that. But when the Holy Spirit, I think we just have to say, you know, Holy Spirit, come and fill me with the fullness of all that you have for me and begin to transform me because the Holy Spirit starts working in our lives. We're transformed over time to become like Jesus. Morton Kelsey wrote a book, and I can't think of the other author that was with him, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the early church and then following up, you know, the first few hundred years. And people prepared to receive the Holy Spirit for months, similar to what we call Life in the Spirit seminars now, where people will go 12 to 14, 16 weeks every week to learn about the Holy Spirit. There was fasting involved. There was just all kinds of, you know, wonderful. And when they, in the early church, when they were baptized in water, they expected the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time. Now we kind of set that apart to confirmation if it's a sacramental church. But even there, we don't expect anything to really happen. I mean, compare that to tongues of fire coming and resting on the day of Pentecost. You know, now it's just so bland when you think about it. And the Holy Spirit comes. I do believe people should have some experience of God when the Holy Spirit fills our life. And we yield to that. There's usually great joy, great love, um, more intimacy. One of the great roles of the Holy Spirit is to bring us into intimacy with God. Uh, so I, I personally believe it's life-changing, life-changing.